In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-story house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. So another day. Um, my aim now is to kind of just keep things moving because um, obviously there's a lot of stuff which needs to be dried and then like sanded and then you know wait 24 hours or whatever so my aim is to while one thing's dry and do something else so the things which are up at the moment is the bathroom floor um these are the tiles that will go on the floor um and then obviously all of the walls in here are going to be tiled as well so the only thing i got to work out is to get the height of these tiles to match the height of the wood outside but also importantly match the height of the shower shower tray um, so as you can see with this there's quite a bit of height which needs to be made so I think what I'm going to do for that is just basically add some layers or maybe two layers even of um, the tile cement just bring the whole thing up um, I don't know if it's the best way. I, I, I guess I could use cement. Anyway, I've got to think about that. Um, so that's one thing I need to figure out and do. Um, because this room in here is basically finished, I can start working out the flooring. Um, this is all, this is solid oak flooring, um, which I bought and ordered from the UK. So it's cheaper than like the, the plastic, the crappy plastic stuff over here. It's not the same price as the cheap plastic stuff I could get it locally. Um, so this is really nice solid egg flooring. Um, the only kind of issue is um, not all these floors are like perfectly flat. I can't seem to get self leveling cement out here. Um, I've asked at like the, the main places. It's really annoying. Um, so yeah, so working out how to make it so that it's not just like constantly wriggling or whatever. And I need to. I've got some underlay as well. So basically, at this point in time, it's just a matter of just having a little play try and figure out how it works um, but it's gonna look really nice. In the main bedroom uh, the only local paint shop which will mix up colours isn't open for another week so I'm gonna hold off on that um, but there's just a couple of little spots I noticed where we kind of missed some screw heads or whatever so I can go around and I can clean up scrape down all of the um, stuff and I also need to clean the ceiling because it's like really dusty from plaster so there's definitely stuff I can do in here while I wait for that um because I don't really want to put the floor in here until I paint the walls downstairs well I'm mid plaster in so basically there's sanding to do and then adding more plaster to do um so there's plenty of that to do and the other big job down here is again making the tiled floor in the kitchen become the same height as the uh, as, as, as the wood floor in certain I, I don't know what the easiest way to do that but whichever way it seems to be of a pain and I also want to like lay down the wood so I want the wood to be like long ways this way so I want to lay down the wood and see where it ends up because it would be nice if it's like whole whole width um, both sides and if that means doing something on this side with the tiles, maybe that would be worth it. You missing, you missing day tiger. Tiger missing day. <laughs> and balcony side, I need to weld up railings. Um, I've got them arriving tomorrow. Um, so basically there's loads of stuff I can get on with and from tomorrow I have loads and loads of materials to do it. It's just a matter of like basically getting stuck in, not making any day-to-day -day excuses uh, and just getting this stuff done. So I'm going to start off by working on this floor, finishing off sanding up here uh, and then just, just, just keep hitting at it. Oh, one more thing, Tadus. The famous Tadas, uh, he's coming up to visit. He's been in Barcelona for the whole of lockdown. Um, so he'll come up, hang out, probably help me out, um, which is cool. He's really great to work with. So today right now, I am uh, sanding off 
the things. Now, if you play normal jointing compound, I think say in the UK or something, you can get stuff which you put on the wall, two mil or whatever, and it doesn't sag. But the only pre-prepared plaster, plaster I can buy here for um, joint, joining compound, it's running a shit. So you put it on smooth as you like, but in the end, it kind of ends up like this. See that? Just riffled, nice sag. So the game is basically sand it off, get flat, and then do the final layer. Just time consuming and super, super freaking dusty. It's not really fun. starting to tile out the bathroom floor. It's gonna just take a little bit of playing with it, but if I can do like this end, then it's a good sort of foundation to kind of like blitz through the rest. So I'm gonna do this first uh, and then work it out. So this is all I'm gonna do for this today because it kind of covers most of the door. Um, and I want to let that set because then it's going to be hard to kind of get in and out anyway so it's going to have to be done in two days. This has been quite tricky because to come off the flat surface of the shower tray and then match up with where the wood will be for the door, um, it's pretty much worked. What I'm going to have to do is start bringing it down gently because I'm like just got quite a lot of build up underneath like it's quite thick um, to make it flat and level and kind of coming off this line and then I think I just try and just gently bring it down because these floors are all a bit interesting. So I'm just going to let that go off a bit now. It's so hard to get it good when it's like so much tile cement underneath. It's like sit, sitting on a bit of a sea of tile cement. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. The tiles look really cool. More metal arrived, um, which means I can basically do my balcony now. I'm going to start off by making the cross supports, um, which will basically carry this wood, which is the balcony wood. So it's basically just a way of adding seven supports across, going to weld them in, um, but first I've got to cut them and they vary a bit because one bit of metal with a bit of the back of the balcony travels along the wall, so that kind of changes its kind of like width of the wall, bends and meanders. Um, so basically you're going to cut them all as precisely as possible because if there's a gap it's much harder for the weld uh, and then I guess get welding but I'm going to have to put some more clothes on can't deal with this stuff with shorts it kind of like stings and burns you so right now I am working on the support to the balcony so this is to support the wood just cutting them and welding them one by one. It's quite thin metal, so it's a little bit tricky to weld. Kind of like quite easy to blow a hole in it. So you just gotta be like, get the power setting right. I'm using my finest rods. done the weld, um, but because the metal is really thin, it's quite hard to do it without blowing holes in it. Um, so basically what I do, the way I'm doing it, is I do the weld. As you see, it's all pretty solid, um, but there's little holes and little gaps. So I grind it off, get the slag off, and then basically I just go in afterwards and try and just fill in the gaps so you get a really kind of uniform, strongish weld. Um, and then whatever's left, any bumps, I grind off again and then I'm using body, body filler, fill it up, sand that down, and then I'll be ready to paint. Um, but obviously first put the gradients on. So basically now I'm just gonna weld up any of the gaps. If you look at this, it's kind of, kind of like a bit gappy. So I can just basically improve that. Don't look at it, tell us.
So this mask is an automatic mask and basically when the light comes on, it basically shuts off the light coming into things. So you, basically you don't have to remove it, it back and forth, quite useful. So yeah, I'm going to go around, going to go over any sort of patchy wells, throw them down, put it, and then basically the structure's is done. But it's nice to get us done. Meanwhile, Ezra and Anna were climbing in Caviers, a nearby bouldering area in the Pyrenees. We are in Caviers in Agasortes. Agasortes? Like Agasortes. Agasortes. And it's sunny. It was so rainy and stormy last night when we arrived. Hey, do you want to tell me what's going on? Where are we? What's this? So, I found this really crimpy climb. I'm just gonna try to give it my best go. I even got my race car shoes out. So, I'm really excited. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, that's not so good. I'm gonna try to go to this one. Make it a bit harder. <laughs> or did you dry fire off? No, I. Something came off. I definitely heard something break. Was it a hand off? Yeah, I broke broke this hand off. Oh. F it. Okay, that filming is all over the place, but hey ho, you sent it. Expected. <laughs> How's your mantling? I thought it was my strong point. So I do those press ups. I was trying to do the first move and accidentally stuck it. <laughs> then before I knew it was at the last move, I just really fluffed it. <laughs> Couldn't figure out how to rock over this. Like, there's no holes to grab, so yeah. The top looks pretty As we're sleuthing around, cleaning up, taking mold out of the cracks.
In this video, I'm going to show you how to make simple, traditional style balcony railings without all the fancy kit. 